Okay, here we are in Blender uh, for the final phase. We're gonna put the materials on our stool. Real quick, like I just set up a scene that looks like this on the outside of it. You can see I've added an HDRI. I think this one's called Machine Shop or something. I think it's from HDRI Haven. It's one of their cool ones for free. You should check them out. Awesome website. Uh, then I've created uh, three planes, two for the walls, one for the floor. I've added textures that I created in Substance Alchemist, which also comes with the Substance Suite if you're a subscriber. Um, along with the HDRI, I've added a um, area lamp over to the side here, as well as an overhead spot lamp. Um, so I have two different lights plus the lighting from the HDRI that are lighting this scene. It's a very simple scene. I'm not going to go any further than that, um, explaining that. So um, hopefully I didn't say things that you didn't understand, but adding an HDRI is pretty easy. And then you can use any textures for the walls from CG Textures, HDRI Haven, or HDRI Textures, which is also a link to that. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so I've also split my window like so. Let me get our area in question right up in the center here. Uh, in this other area, I've opened two windows. You can simply hover up in the upper left corner, left click and hold, and then drag out an entire window, and then do it again to drag down this little window. In the little window here for the editor, I chose a click and I chose a file browser. So that's what's here in the top part here. And this is a simple shader editor. You just go here and pick shader editor. Okay, let's get started. First things first, we have to import our FBX file. So let's go to File, Import, FBX. Mine's on my desktop. You'll have to go to wherever you put your model. I've put it all into the, to a folder with the textures that we uh, exported from Substance Painter. This is the one I want. I'm going to import. And you see it pops up right in the middle of my scene. Again, I set this scene up. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's a very simple scene. Um, hopefully you'll be able to get something similar for your photograph. Okay, so with the model now in our scene, I can select it. Once I select it in our shader editor, we get the option to uh, make a new texture. Uh, now I'm going to have to look around for my uh, principled shader, as you do sometimes. Okay, we get the basic default principled shader. Real quick, like over here in the uh, EV render engine is what we're rendering this in. Um, under the EV samp uh, settings, I have 200 samples is what I have it set to. Viewport's only 16 like default, but it's set to 200 for the render. Ambient occlusion is on, and I've got it set to about 0.4. Um, you can put it to whatever you think looks good. I've also got screen space reflections checked. And then under shadows, for cube size, if we hover here, you'll see it says the size of point and area light shadow map. So I kicked that up to 1024. I think it's 512. Um, and I may have done that for this one too. I think they both, both might be by default 512. I just kick them up just a little bit. And then let's pick high bit depth for the shadows. Okay, and then under color management, if we open that up, I've set it to the look medium high contrast. Um, usually I think it says none by default, but I think what they mean is that it might be medium high contrast or medium contrast just by their default setting. All right, let's close that up. All right, first step is we have to have selected the folder uh, that our um, substance painter textures or material set is in. The first one we're gonna put in is the base color. So we'll find base color, click it. If we click its icon, left click and hold, we can just drag it in and it'll create an image texture for us. In between here, I'm gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna add in a input ambient occlusion. I may be a little close there, so I'm gonna go color to color on the ambient occlusion, color out to base color. Okay, so let me get this up close so we can see what's going on. Okay, we can see the metallic, or I'm sorry, the base color um, on here, uh, and we haven't added anything else, so it looks kind of bland and kind of plain. But let's just keep adding stuff. All right, the next one we're gonna add is metallic. If we left click it, left click its icon, drag it down in here, we're gonna go color to metallic. And you can see we start to get some of the metallic qualities. Now we wanna go in here to where it says color space, click it and put non-color, which it already was. Uh, sometimes it picks it up, sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, if it's not though, just make sure that it's non-color. Okay, I'm gonna pull this principled shader down just a little bit, I think. Okay, so the next one we wanna add in is gonna be our roughness. So we'll find roughness. We'll left click its icon, drag it down in here. And we're gonna just hook the color right into the roughness. And we can see it comes on just a little bit shiny here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this. Uh, well, it's non-color already. Sometimes it's non-color, it picks it up that it should be, and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, let's click it to non-color right here. So just make sure. I think it's maybe because I ran through this a couple times that it's remembering that I want a non-color. So you just make sure it says non-color in all of these here. Okay, so the next one we want is the height. Let's come up here and click height. Drag its icon in here. And then in order to hook a height into this principle, we need to put a vector bump. So if we hit Shift A, uh, vector bump, and then we'll go color to height, and then the normal to normal. Okay, when it does that, for some reason, a lot of times when it comes into uh, Blender, it's just really strong. Um, and so that's pretty easy to fix. Um, first off, we want it to say non-color data right here. So um, again, it may not, if it doesn't, just make sure it, you click it and put non-color data right here on this height. And then we can see a couple things here. If we see that the parts that are poking in should be, are actually look like they're poking out, we can click invert. Sometimes, depending on how you had it set in Substance Painter, it'll look like outies instead of innies. We want this to be innies, so uh, it looks like innies, so we're leaving it. And then we can just take the strength way down. Um, the strength came in, comes in pretty strong, so maybe somewhere around 0.1 is a good place to leave it. Okay, that gives us a little bit of roughness. Um, maybe we could take it down even a little more if we want, if we don't want it to be that rough. Okay, cool, that looks pretty good. So we just have to make sure that if, if it's innies instead of outies and we wanna reverse it, we can just hit invert. And we can control the strength with this strength knob. And then it has to be non-color data. All right, so one more to add, which is gonna be the normal. Select it, left click its icon and drag it down here below. And then right off to the side, we need to hit shift A and we need to add a vector normal map. We're gonna go out of this normal map into this uh, normal maps color. And then we're gonna come up right here where it says normal. We're gonna collect this normal and connect it to the normal on the bump node. Okay, and everything looks pretty fair. So this is a point where we can check out our normals. Uh, some of this stuff seems to possibly be a little bit reversed. They're sticking out um, so we can see if we need to reverse something. Here's a point of contention. It used to be always that every map in here was non-color data. Uh, for some reason, I've heard some pretty reputable people lately saying, and I haven't done the research as to why, I'm kind of trusting them on it, but um, right now it's gonna have to be whatever we think is the artist. Some people are saying that it should not be non-color data anymore. So I'm gonna click it real quick to um, RGB just to see what happens. Okay, so this is what it looks like set to RGB going into the color. And then if we mess with the strength, uh, one thing about the normal, the normal can affect the way the light uh, reflects off of things, which is its job, part of its job. But if we ch move it around, we can see exactly what's going on and we can see that maybe we have to adjust its strength first off. And then we'll adjust it all over to where we think it looks pretty good. And then, in my opinion, the way the light's coming off of it just doesn't look right. So let's come down here and try changing it to non-color. For me, the non-color still just looks better. Um, I don't know if that's uh, what's on out in Blender land right now, but there's a little bit of contention as to which one you should pick. So I'm not going to tell you which one to pick. I'm thinking that you should probably mess around with the strength and then try color, uh, RGB, and non-color and pick the look you like. Okay, so we've got all of our maps in. I'm gonna go ahead and take a photo of this by hitting render, render images, or render image. Okay, and here's our stool, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna leave it just how it is. I'm gonna leave the normal as non-color. Um, I've heard some people say some different stuff lately, so it's uh, I'll have to do a little more research. For my money, it's trial and error when you hear conflicting information like that. Just try it both ways, and whichever way looks better to you is the one you should obviously go with. Uh, for me, this looks pretty good, um, and that's where I'm gonna end this tutorial. I thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a lot, um, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.